Jones, though, one of the nation's top shot blockers, 4.4 per. Not that it concerns Akizi. He says if you start fading away, that gives him space to block your shot. I'm going to take the ball right to him. He thinks he can block everything, so he gets frustrated when you're sticking it to him. That's the way he is. That's what I'll try and do. Number four, Maryland. Wow. Hosting G Tech. Yeah, First tap. Like Steve like Francis to LaRon yeah. Profit. Back to Francis doing mad work on the alley oop. Forgive me, Father, for I'm a Juco transfer who had 14 points. Second half, Francis trying to get some flavor. Off the backboard to Profit, but Profit blows the dunk. Gary Wims is living. Gets a replacement for Francis. Francis takes a seat for four minutes. Steve said later, we didn't play good and we didn't shoot the ball well. Later he learned Francis, fundamental chest pass to Profit for the dunk. Francis, four assists. Jones and Akizi went right at each other all night. Jones wins this battle. He had 12 points, nine boards, two blocks. Akizi, 10.7 rebounds. Tech, a one-point lead at this point. But Laron Profit, three. Top of the food chain. Profit, 15 points. Terps closed with a 21-5 run. Bobby Crimmins says, we didn't close it out when we could have. Maryland wins at 77-62. The game a lot closer than the score indicates. Maryland was down with eight minutes left to a team with no seniors and who earlier this season lost to Hofstra and to Kentucky by 41 points. Still, Terps beat G-Tech for the sixth straight time over three seasons. Number 14, Purdue at number 24, Ohio State. ESPN's Kirk Herbstreit, former Buckeye QB. Seahawks' Joey Galloway, former Buckeye wideout. First half, Michael Red says, Kurt, Joey, how you like me now? Red becomes the second fastest player in school history to score 1,000 points. At one time, it was Michael Red, 23, Purdue, 22. Later in the half, Scooney Penn bigs up for three. Then Scooney steals the inbounds pass and will score again. Charging is called, but the bucket counts. Buckeyes in a 17-2, seven-minute run. Purdue had seven turnovers in those seven minutes, and Gene Cady is the Boilermaker. And Michael Red is blowing stuff up. He was 9 of 28 his previous two games, shooting 14 of 21 with 30 points here, said Red. Whoa. Tonight was real important for my confidence. Ohio State blows out Purdue 72 to 43. Gene Cady's worst loss to the Buckeyes in his 18 years as Purdue coach. Buckeyes' biggest win over the Boilermakers in 38 years, said Cady. And this is a quote. He was obviously livid. He said, I sensed some attitudes that they were not buying into the system, so I told the team, are you happy now? You did it your way. New Mexico won the first eight. State took the next ten. Lobos won 19 straight from 1925 to 32. Aggies counter with a 19-game run of their own. Lobos won nine straight from 1961 to 66 and currently have a seven-game run in the series. And for the record, New Mexico entered the Union January 6, 1912. To the game, Kenny Thomas, KT went off. 18 points, nine boards, but Lobos only shot 34% New Mexico by one. Aggies begging. William Key, sick crossover to Charles Gosef for the jam. Keys, who had seven assists, said, I just started penetrating and kicking instead of shoot, shooting over the big guys. Second half, Keys on the alley. Gosa freaks the oop. Gosa had 16 points. Later in the second, more Keys. And I've told you once, Rich, please, please don't hate the player. Hate the game. Keys, 24 points and 8 of 13 shooting. He's one of five Northeastern Illinois players who transferred to state after the Illinois school dropped its basketball program. And who'd have thunk it? Lobos suffered their worst loss in this series in 40 years, going down 76 to 55. Lou Henson gets his 693rd career win, seven shy becoming the 13th D1 coach to reach 700. Lobos missed nine of its first 12 shots in the second half and went without a bucket for nearly six minutes. Temple at Duquesne, number four, Bucket Courtney Wallace sits the table for a loose ball. Corner, Check out Knucklehead. Dude, I was in Sports Center with a witty baseball move, man. First half, Temple's Lamont Lock Barnes shot, was the biz the the 14 Barnes points in the first the half. Then Quincy Mod Quincy Wadley misses a three. Don't so hurt him, LB. Barnes, 16 points, 13 boards. Temple up seven at recess. Second half. Sweetest thing I ever seen. Sanchez Rasheed the Broken Burrow hitting the three. Burrow. Broken Burrow breaking it off real proper. He had five shots in the night, four of them threes. He had 14 points. Temple Cruz is 75 52. Down low, high percentage. That's how you go. Seven for 10 on the night. 18 points overall. Arkansas up for it. The break. But second half, Alabama moving the ball to Jeremy Hayes down low. Nine of 12 from the field. More Hayes. Brian Williams finds him for the pull up jumper. Hayes had 24 points to lead Alabama to a 67 to 60 victory and Hayes's 24 was a season high for him. My temple or did you forget your research paper? FSU of five Tara Baker getting a swerve on nice spinning pass to Damus Anderson. Damus dunked it. He had 
11. And then Baker, great save. Reward that man. Yes, indeedy. Baker, 14 points. Under seven left. Florida State down two. Ron Hale. Hale, yes. Three from the corner. He had 21 points. No shoot, 74% in the second half to win it. 74-68. Seminoles, four and two conference record. Surprising sole possession of third place in the ACC behind Duke and Maryland. Robert O'Kelly, 27 for the Demon Deacons. Cleveland State, Wisconsin, Green Bay. Second half, watched down by the baseline. Jerry Karstensen, leveled by Sonny Johnson while trying to set a pick. Take another look. Blue 52! Blue 8! Says, hut, hut. Johnson lowers his body, sends Karstensen flying. Karstensen will be okay. He's a college basketball player. Under two minutes left. Karstensen's only field goal of the game. Got his revenge. Wisconsin Green Bay goes on a win. It's left to go in regulation. Steve Lapore, nice jumper in the paint. We're going to overtime. Penn State coach Jerry Dunn's squad would be down as much as seven in overtime, but Jossie Klein heard dunks it. We're tied at 60. 6.6 ticks left. Julian Bonner gets the in inbounds pass, goes the length of the floor, fires and hits it. And that'll wrap it up. Northwestern wins it by the final of 62 to 60. Bradley and Illinois State, 10 seconds left. Illinois State up two, second half. Rob Dodd misses the three, but hustles to get his own rebound for Bradley. If you don't, he hits his second attempt. With 1.6 seconds left, Illinois State missed a prayer at the buzzer. Bradley wins. First, though, where Jimmy Calhoun's Huskies look to go 16-0 for the first time in school history and already up one in the first half. Kevin Freeman, high percentage, UConn up three. But Miyama comes right back. Johnny Hemsley for three. He got 18 at the half. Miami up one at the half only the second time this year. UConn's trailed at the half. In the second half, Miami still hanging with the Huskies. Tim James hanging in the air, and John Salmon's hitting him. Miami down just one. Miami down, Miami up three now late in the second half. Khalid El Amin. Oh, that's so pretty. He had 13. UConn down one. UConn up two now. Under 10 seconds left. Miami gets it to the man. Tim James in the lane, in the paint. He had 16. No tougher two than those you saw right there. Jim Calhoun's body English can't keep it out. So with 5.4 seconds left, UConn goes to El Amin. Trying to go the length of the floor. He slips. Hemsley, the desperation? No. We're going to overtime. In overtime, tied at 66, UConn goes to its All-American, Richard Hamilton, and he rips it smooth from three-point land. He had 31, UConn up three. 1.9 seconds left. Miami down two. Chance to tie or win. John Salmon's wide open three, and it can't drop. Take another look. Nice rotation. It just doesn't fall. Great reaction shot. Miami coach Leonard Hamilton's eyes get as wide as the rim. But it's no good. Miami, Bummin, UConn, El Amin and Hamilton, love it. Overtime thriller, 70 to 68. A great effort by Miami, by Miami in front of a school record crowd of 15,147, 12,000 more than its average. The Canes now 0-5 all time against number one ranked teams. For what it's worth, UConn has won nine straight games on ESPN or ESPN2. Bristol and stores, perfect together, just like the Huskies. Still, we knew coming in it would be a tough environment to play in. And the one thing we wanted to do, we didn't want to go home on that plane ride, you know, <laughs> sick in the stomach and things like that. So we really played hard for 40 minutes. I thought our kids were focused, they were prepared. Uh, we gave a, a tremendous effort. We just got beat by a team that made some big shots when the game was on the line. And that's what a quality, well coached team like Connecticut would. Out Jamal McGlore, who sat out because he broke a curfew, but Kentucky. Wildcat freshman Desmond Allison. Allison picked up the slack. Kentucky led 21-16 on Cliff Ellis' squad. More from Allison. Off the Wayne Turner rebound and feed. Allison lays it in. Kentucky by four. Then late in the first half, more from Allison. A three in the corner. The freshman led all scores with 10 at the half. Kentucky led at the break. 31 to 22. Second half, different half, same story. Allison gathers the ball, dishes to fellow freshman Suleiman Kamara. Tough shot in the paint. He nails it. Wildcats up 46-32. Auburn's undefeated season going down. 
at the hands of a senior, though, down the stretch. Hashimu Evans puts it up and in, and the foul. Evans had a game-high 20. Kentucky beats Auburn 72-62. It was Evans' first double-digit scoring night in eight games, and it ended Auburn's best start since... Clemson coach Larry Scheid playing without Johnny Miller and Vincent Witt, who were suspended. Freshman Will Solomon, senior Tom Weidman, bigged up early first half. Solomon, oh, Poppy, I did not know you could do it like that. Had a career-high 19 points. Tigers' next possession. Solomon drives. Pretty pass around Burgess to Weidman. Weidman, nine points, nine rebounds. William Avery kept the Blue Devils in it off the steal. One of 19 Clemson turnovers. Avery, buttery smooth. Shorty had 18. Still, though, Duke only up three at recess because Trajan Langdon and Elton Brand had a combined two for nine shooting in the first half. Second half, Duke being the bomb and shooting the bomb. Shane Battier, two threes. Coach K said, I told my team to learn to find different ways. You saw Langdon's first three. And then inside, young Elton Brand growing up like boys to men. I will get there. I will get there somehow. 22 points, five rebounds, four blocks for Brand. Duke wins at 82 to 60. Elton said after his one basket, one rebound first half, I wanted to assert myself and finish. 17 of Brand's 22 came in the second half. Blue Devils had almost as many blocks, seven, as they had turnovers, eight. Clemson, which used to be in the top 25, lost for the sixth time in seven games. Number nine, St. John's at Providence. St. John forward Tyrone Grant sitting it out, broken wrist. How would the Red Storm respond? Like champs. Kendrick Moore's pass picked off by Bootsy Thornton. Ah, Bootsilla's here, baby bubba. Thornton to LeVar Postel. Bootsy had 17 points, Postel 14. Moore sloppy play by the Friars. Turns into Reggie Jesse, who rocks the crib. He had a career high 16. Coach Tim Welsh watched his team commit 11 first half turnovers. Second half, somebody called 911 because John Linehan got his ankles broke. Eric Barkley, sick crossover. Freshman led everybody with 18 points. Trojan coach Henry Bibby first learned 30 years ago when he was a UCLA guard. During a summertime pickup game, he watched teammate Sidney Wicks try to choke USC's Matt Calvin. Said Bibby, there was total hatred there. So much for that UCLA hat that Trojan guard Adam Spanich wore when he was in high school. Adam says simply, that hat is gone. Here we go. UCLA goes cross down to bang with USC first half. Earl Watson, half court alley oop to Jerron Rush. Watch out there, doctor. Y'all don't know nothing about that right there. Rush 11 in the half, 15 in the game. Second half, Jeff. Try Pena trying to be a player. Baron Davis, player hating. Two blocks for Davis. Bruins nine as a team. Then Ray Young rewards Davis. Great pass. Baron lays it home. He had 16. Then it was Young's turn. Watson dishes to Young. Bruins up 17. They shot 54%. Next UCLA possession. Watson another of his eight assists. Easy. Young UCLA by 19. Next. Davis on the break with the alley. Young just freaking the oop. 11 nothing. Bruin run to start the half. And then US. USC finally scored. Young spots for three. After USC scored, done. Young scored nine straight points. He finished with 12. UCLA wins it 98 to 80. Bruins beat the Trojans for the ninth straight time. UCLA rattled in a season high 10 three pointers. Pretty fat considering the Bruins came in last among Pac 10 teams in three point shooting. Illinois, number 16, Wisconsin. Currently 16-3, Dick Bennett and the Badgers looking for their best start since 1940. Ty Calderwood, Grand Larceny. One of 17 Illinois turnovers. Nice dish to Andy Mowski. Calderwood, six assists. You won't find many better than that. Later first half, Mike Kelly with the steal. This time, he misses, but Dwayne Dwayne, we'll just call him Dwayne Squared. Dwayne had four points, but we'll say it's eight. Dwayne Dwayne, four. Yeah, you get it. Second half, Badgers on the break. Calderwood behind his back to Kowski for the layup and the foul. Badgers up by 15. Calderwood said later, we don't build too many 30-point leads. And then John Bryant, money on the three. Bryant, five of eight, three-pointers, 17 points. Wisconsin wins it in a beatdown, 75-53. Badgers off to their best Big Ten start in 37 years, and nobody notices. Sent from the line coming in, Sports Center educational programming. Definition of free throw, an unhindered shot in basketball made from behind a set line and awarded because of a foul by an opponent. Minnesota made all 16 free throws in the first half. Quincy Lewis, who had 30 points, said, We've been known as a bad free throw shooting team, but we really connected tonight. <laughs> yeah, they made the first four in the second half, and then Kevin Clark at the line shooting three to tie and break the school record for most consecutive free throws, 21, 22, 23. Later in the second half, Gophers up seven. Lewis Bullock, can you smell what the rock is cooking? Bullock, five of nine from three land, he had 33. Miles Tarver, chances at the Big Ten record. 
Uh, Miles! Oh. Said Miles, I'll hear about it tomorrow. This is after 25 straight, and then, for good measure, he missed the second one. He said, I may not show up tomorrow. I blew it. Michigan now down two until Brandon Smith ties it up real proper. Like Brandon's only basket, nine shots. Now 61 59 Gophers. Kevin Nathaniel steals it, seals it on and cracking. Nathaniel's only basket. Brian Ellerby knows the definition of defeat frustration by nullification or by prevention of success. Mm. A plus, Rich. Mm -hmm. Show your work next time. The alley oop to Eton Thomas. 14 points for Thomas. Syracuse was up early. More Syracuse, a block party for Thomas. What else is new? Six blocks in this game. And then Ryan Blackwell would pass ahead to Hart for the lay-in. Orangemen were up 45 to 19 at the break. Second half, more of the same. Tony Bland with the spark to Thomas. Bobbling, tipping it in. Seven boards to go along with his six blocks and 14 points. 90 to 51, the final. Not a memorable performance for the Eagles. For everyone, for every one of them, this marked their first visit to the Carrier Dome, and obviously it showed. Said Syracuse coach Jim Beheim, this was a good win. Anytime you can have an easy game, that's good. As the now, Stanford's won its first five conference games thus far, but needless to say, Cardinal coach Mike Montgomery will have none of that. They're trying to divert pressure from themselves. My friend Lute doesn't miss a trick, he said. As for Mike's friend Lute, there was no avoiding the pressure in Eugene. Three minutes left. Oregon down two on the run. Freshman Frederick Jones in the paint. Hits it. We're tied at 81. Arizona up one after hitting free throws under 10 seconds left. Ducks looking for the win. It's Jones again penetrating in the paint again. This time he's fouled by A.J. Bramlett. So Jones goes to the line. Jones needs to hit one free throw to tie. Jones needs to hit one free throw to tie. Oh, my goodness. Arizona gets the board. And Lute Olsen's team right back at you, tough guy. 85-83 is the final. The Cats needed every last one of Jason Terry's career-high 37 points as they escaped Eugene by just two. But Terry's greatest contribution might have been rattling Jones at the line. I told him, you're a freshman. You're going to miss these shots, Terry said. But I was just joking. I didn't think he'd miss them both. As for Stanford, I'm going to host Washington State at Maples. Final seconds, first half, Arthur Lee plays beat the clock effectively. He had 12, Stanford by 14 at the half. Second half, different half, same story. Lee feeding Mark Matson for the alley-oop. Matson had 15, Stanford up 24. Now David Mosley on the break. I can't even do the math to figure out Stanford's lead at this point. Mosley had 15, Stanford cruises 94 to 45. A battle for first place in the Big Ten with the Iowa Hawkeyes. With a victory, the Spartans would take over sole possession of the top spot in the conference. To the Breslin Center, and oh, I love you too. First half, Ira rolling, Guy Rucker, two of his 12 points. Iowa was ahead 19-4, but Michigan State would come back big time. Morris Peterson, he's not selfish, he's smart. 19 points for Peterson. And Michigan State would be rolling from there. They were up by 10 in the second half. Mateen Cleves put it up for Morris. 10 assists for Cleves. More on Mateen in a moment. Then Cleves in transition. Cleves keeping it himself. 15 points for Mateen. He's pumped up and so is Michigan State. Turned out to be an easy win for the Spartans as they win their fourth straight and now stand all alone in first place in the Big Ten. The final score is impressive considering Michigan State did not hit their first basket until just over three minutes into this game. By the way, with his 10 assists, Mateen Cleaves now has 492, moving him ahead of Magic Johnson into fourth place on the school's career list. Virginia, just three wins in its last 58 visits to Chapel Hill. Brandon Haywood keeping the Tar Heels magic continuing against Virginia 12 points a career high 16 boards Carolina dominating on D as well Max Owens hustling back for the block Heels big man the story so what else is new Haywood triple team right so he passes to Brian Versticker North Carolina led by 20 at the break Virginia just no answer for the Tar Heels size Ed Coda taking advantage to Haywood Said Virginia coach Pete Gillen, they just knocked us around. The Tar Heels out rebounded the Cavs. Where is that? I don't know. We'll find it. Watch the spot shadow. This is Cincinnati and Louisville, by the way. Jermaine Tate at the elbow. Steve Logan. He's going to miss the J. Louisville doesn't block out Tate, and he follows with his two hands. Next Bearcat possession. Again, we spot shadowed Tate. Why? Well, Melvin Levitt misses the three. No worries. Tate jams it. 
Bearcats led 42-26 at the break. Second half, more of the same off the break. Nobody picks up Mr. Tate and makes the Cardinals pay. Cincinnati with 14 offensive boards in the game. They win easily, 81-55. Said Louisville coach Denny Crum after the terrible beating by the Bearcats. I don't know if my players were scared or what. On his team being out-rebounded 44-19, we weren't even pretending to rebound. Cincinnati just wanted the ball, went, and got it. Second half, and they would then pull away. It's Richie Fromm. Can someone please cover Jeremy Eaton? 22 points for Eaton. Gonzaga suddenly a five-point lead, and they would continue. Quentin Hall, this is nasty. Takes it strong. He had 14 points and six assists. Gonzaga plus a free throw would take a seven-point lead. Then just under four minutes left, Matt Santangelo to Eaton plus a foul. Gonzaga takes it by an even dozen. That's six straight wins for the Bulldogs, who remain perfect.